it's a uh, late September day and um, autumn's just starting a few trees are getting a tiny bit of yellow on them from the cool nights but most of them are still fully green I'm just entering the woods now just look at this place tranquil beauty and I've already seen a tree which I planted years ago which has done terribly to be honest and uh, the hot summer is clearly taking its toll on him well this is a horse chestnut tree a conker and uh, when I planted him he was probably about down to here however he also got cut one year with secateurs too you could see that it was a clean cut at the time however he's branched out and every year since he's done okay but uh, this year he's grown from about here I believe and we've got all this new, but again, it looks almost like he's been clean cut with secateurs by some arsehole. I do have some uh, nitrozyme infused water, seaweed feed, which uh, is in a protein shaker. And I'm going to give him a little bit as well as the other trees that I'm here to see. So on to the next one. Okay, I've managed to uh, fight my way around the back through some brambles. Um, <laughs> God nearly injuring myself so I hope I hope I get some views on this but even if I don't I needed to come see my tree um, he looks insane this guy's doubled in size since I last seen him at least really nice thick trunk on him just this beautiful conifer shape the branches are so long on him look at this look at this guy and so healthy as well the hot summer really hasn't phased him Look at all the growth he's done just on this one branch. Amazing. We've got a bit of algae growing on his bark here. So he's got wildlife value. He's always been a, a spider magnet. Um, there you go, a bit of dead wood there. I would say he's a good 10 to 12 foot, somewhere around that region. Just look at this healthy, healthy branch though. He has grown incredibly. You know a, a, a Leyland's healthy when the bark, the newer bark is red, the newest growth is green, and the leaves are just this beautiful, happy, supple kind of texture. Wow. My brother planted an apple tree grown from a seed in our parents garden years ago probably germinated in oof, maybe 2011 so it's uh well 11 years old now i would say and he's just down here now apple trees from seed are notoriously slow growing which is what we found out very quickly they're also very prone to disease and dying from like mildew and stuff like that. But here we go. Beautiful apple tree sapling. You see some, probably a squirrel's been raking out the bark around the base. It's very dangerous. But um, it's got that nice kind of apple tree spotting on the bark. A little bit of lichen on him. And obviously this guy's suffered in the summer heats as well. He's even got a bit of dye back here on the top, as you can see, just breaking off. But uh, overall, he's responded to the rain that's come after. And it's a good thing he was well established for years. He's um, grown fairly slowly, granted, but you know what? He's actually coming into a nice size now. Look at this little canopy forming. And if I was to stake him up, um, he would actually look quite a lot taller than he is, but obviously. He's leaning, so jobs for next time is to clear the brambles around the conifer and probably bring a stake for this guy to uh, grow him a bit straighter. Okay, we've just watered this guy as well with some uh, seaweed feed in water and um, 
That's the great thing about nitrozyme or any kind of seaweed feed. Plants respond instantly. Look at the bark, it's gone all green. And that's because it can be used as a foliar feed too. The plants can absorb the nutrients through the bark and through leaves. And so this guy will be really enjoying this. Um, especially after the hot, hot summer, record breaking summer that he's had, which has caused a bit of defoliation and a little bit of dieback. So uh, that'll be a nice little treat for him before he drops his leaves next month. Coming up on tree number two, again, not a great impressive specimen, but to be honest, this tree when I planted him, and I'll link the video below uh, where I did plant him years ago, this little holly was like a two leaf specimen. He was tiny, so he's probably grown <sighs> tenfold at least. He actually has done really well. He's unfortunately a bit spreading instead of shooting up as a tree would do. Um, perhaps in the winter I'll bring some twine and kind of and a stake and kind of train these branches upwards so he looks more tree form and shoots for the sky. So at the moment he's a bit of a spreading plant. There we go, a little bit more old receipts. You can actually track receipts to uh, people as well so if I had the uh, time and the um, knowledge of how to you could easily do that and colour them for littering. But anyway, beautiful British woodland made up of oaks, um, sweet chestnuts, silver birch, scots pine, larch trees. Um, really is a uh, beautiful place that I do love in uh, visiting. Did a lot of tree planting here in the past, however the uh, woodland managers, Doncaster Metropolitan, oh, I can't say that word, excuse me, Doncaster Metropolitan Borough Council, they're arseholes and basically, and they uh, cut down most of my trees and even some of their own. Look at that, the tree that never was, poor stump. Um, they really are buggers for that. Just through here I used to have a huge horse chestnut that I rescued from growing out of pavement and then grew on for a few years and he was huge. And they cut him down because this is their site of their resident giant redwood. One of two in this wood. Gorgeous trees. However, my, my horse chestnut was actually uh, that level with that tree there, but obviously further in this gap. So, probably had a good 10, 10 metres at least distance. Could have grew up and been a big beautiful tree and died after 200 years, you know. And that would have been a blink of a, uh, an eye in the lifetime of a redwood. This guy wouldn't have even noticed him. But uh, it happened anyway. So what can you do? Beautiful red bark. Look at that. As soon as these uh, two redwoods in this wood start coning, I will be here to collect seeds. I have seeds from uh, Forney Island. Down near Portsmouth. I have seeds from uh, Luton, seeds from um, Kew Gardens, which a Karen on the internet told me off for. And so I would like some giant redwood seeds from Doncaster too, just to keep the genetic diversity up there. But um, yeah, these guys are a bit juvenile at the moment to be producing seed. Just an interesting one, giant redwoods growing in... Uh, South Yorkshire. Been doing a little bit of seed collecting recently, um, including giant redwood seeds. But uh, on today's trawl, I have some beautiful English oak. They haven't had a crop like this for years, so the, the hot summer at least made someone happy. And that is the oak trees of the area. I'm also looking for some sweet chestnut seeds that have uh, split as they've hit the ground. But um, I keep finding uh, slightly unripe and fully closed spiky um, casings, which obviously uh, are hard and hurtful to get into. So we will prevail. But just look at this. Good for the soul. No, I'm litter picking, but one thing I refuse to pick up is people's dog shit. That is just disgusting and disrespectful. Why go to the effort to bag it up? At least dog poo will 
biodegrade the plastic bag that you've now littered into the environment will not it will stay for a thousand years photodegrading choking animals and god knows what what can you do there we go people really have no respect